Hey Boom Squad, how you doing out there? I'm back uh, for build tutorial number three. Today we're going to talk about the parallel coil. I'm going to show you the uh, how to wrap one of those suckers up. Something I use quite often in any of my builds. I'll parallel quite a few wires together. Uh, they're not necessarily the same wire, but this is kind of the segue to the uh, zipper that I want to show you uh, next time around. So last <clears throat> first build video I did, I showed you guys how to do the macro coil, just a simple coil plain, ordinary coil, anybody can build, um, you know, great flavor, all that stuff. Uh, last week we did the twisted coil. So we're going to take a, a bit of a step back per se and just go to the single wires again. Then I'm going to talk to you guys about the parallel. And then from there, it's a perfect segue into one of my all time favorite uh, beginner style builds is the zipper. So which incorporates the parallel and the twisting all together. So it's it's one of my favorite builds to make. It's very basic, but flavor in wicking is phenomenal. Ramp up is super low. So and that can be said the same thing with the parallel build that we're going to talk about today. The ramp up is super quick and uh, flavor is fantastic. It's a warm build uh, and you need a, a decent atomizer to run this on. And obviously the ohms are going to be a little bit lower because you're not only doing we're going to duel this today. But because it's a parallel build, the dual is almost like it being a four coil build. So which means you're, say on a uh, regular macro coil that we did last week or two weeks ago that were dueled, we were uh, sitting at approximately with 24 gauge canthal in and around the 0.4 ohms. And that's with two coils. Well, when we parallel a coil and you do it dual, you're going to chop that in half again. So from 0.4, you're going to go down to 0.2. So you get into the lower ohm belts. With lower ohms, you get more heat, uh, and you need a proper device to fire them once you get past that 0.2 ohm mark. So you need to make sure that uh, you have a device and batteries that are in good shape and can handle those lower belts. So 0.2 is still pretty uh, is pretty good. It's not in the danger zone by any means, depending on your device, of course. Um, but you're going to need to fire that sucker. You're going to need at least a good 75 watts, if not more. Uh, to run that uh, to run this setup that we're about to build today. So make sure guys if you're, you're doing this you have a good set of batteries and a mod that can handle that kind of lower resistance. So we're still we're, we're just dabbling into the realm of uh, mech mod builds um, to do a proper mech mod, mech mod build so it has good fire if it has good flavor and good uh, ramp up and all that stuff and you're not going to hurt the battery you want to be in the 0 0.1 0 0.15 range so um, we're, we're just chipping away at that guys one day soon in the next few weeks we'll we'll talk about how to build on a, a mech that's a whole different world um, we're not going to uh, talk about that right now so today is going to be about the parallel build so let's uh, let's get right down to it guys let's uh, go right down to the mat here and we'll talk about what tools we're going to use and uh, get started on this build in the meantime I'm going to have a quick little toot on my Buddha okay everybody so here's the tools that we're going to be using today we've got our pliers right here we got some cotton for wicking later we got our wire snippers we got some scissors to cut our cotton with I'm gonna use up the rest of this uh, 24 gauge coil master canthal I just want to get rid of the spool and I'm gonna be building on the twisted messes too today um, we got a couple coil jigs I got a little tool here to tighten down my posts on my twisted messes too uh, some ceramic tipped tweezers, some tweezers for my cotton, and of course the trusty ohm meter. We're also going to incorporate the, uh, the drill again today, guys. Uh, we're going to straighten our wire before we do this. It'll just make for cleaner coils uh, down the road. So, All right, let's clear this uh, workspace away here and we'll, we'll get to building. Well, I, I enjoy doing parallel builds. They're, uh, quite, they're quite satisfying. Even the basic, even the basic wire ones are uh, very satisfying. So we're going to need to pull off, you know, a good, good length of wire here because we're going to straighten it. So I'm going to pull off. We'll call it uh, about a, we'll call it about a foot here, and I'm going to get two pieces in and around the the one foot mark. So two feet of wire ish 
our coils today. I'm going to attempt to install the Twisted Messes 2 is a is a 22 millimeter deck. So I'm going to attempt to install uh, two of these uh, two of these coils. Each one should be six wraps, but it'll be 12 wraps. So may actually have to downsize it to uh, a smaller a smaller wire. So I'm going to pop you back up to FaceTime. So when we straighten this wire, uh, you guys can see that in action again. So. All right, so we got our drill here, and as I showed you guys before, you're gonna open up the chuck of the drill. You'll insert your wire inside of the center of the drill. Uh, perfecto. I'll show you guys what that looks like. You can see that there, a little blurry, but uh, you can see that it's right in the center of the chuck of that drill. And then we'll take our pliers. We'll clamp down on the other end of the uh, wire. Pull nice and snug and uh, give her a straighten. Like I said before, it's two, three, four seconds at most. So one, two, three, four. Boom, nice and straight. See, just like that. We're gonna straighten a second piece of wire. You don't have to straighten your wire. I just find when wrapping uh, a straighter piece of wire is easier to work with than uh, something that is all loosey-goosey and coiled up so once again pull real tight with your pliers and you're gonna go two three four seconds one two three four give it an extra second there another piece of straight wire take it out of the chuck of your drill and now you have two very straight pieces of wire to wrap your coils with okay we'll go back to the build mat and uh, go from there Okay, perfect. So now we have our straightened pieces of wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these wires in half. That way we have four pieces of wire to make our coils with. Because I said we're going to be doing parallels, so we need to have four wires for four coils, per se. Cut that guy in half. Now we have four pieces of wire. So we're going to use our uh, trusty little coil jig here. You guys can see on this coil jig, if you can feel focus, stupid camera. Um, it shows all of the different uh, sizes of the diameters here. So we're going to do a 2.5 millimeter in diameter coil today. So we're going to take our piece of wire, we'll put it on the 2.5 millimeter spot on the coil jig, and we're going to fold the wire towards us just like so, okay? And we're going to wrap it around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So now you have a nice single coil, just like that. I'm going to make another one. I'm going to cut this this long lead off here first because we don't need that. Snip. Okay, there's one coil. Here's your second coil. So six times around. Keeping the wires as close together as you can. That's four. That's five and that's six right there, okay? So now we have in front of us, folks, we have two macro coils. But I said, let's do a parallel coil. So a little trick I've learned along the way in order to maintain uh, nice tight coils is there's two ways you can wrap these coils. You can either wrap them around your, your coil jig or screwdriver together like that with two wires but what that tends to do is you're not going to put an even amount of pressure on each one of these each one of these wires when you wrap it around so one might be slightly looser than the other so what that could end up doing is one of the coils is going to fire a little quicker than the other so it can just be a little bit of a hassle it can make for a sloppier build so what I tend to do when I'm doing these parallel parallel wires is I'll wrap them independently so I did the first one, and there's this little bit of a bend here where this lead kind of protrudes off to the side a bit. 
that's where you're going to insert your other wire and you're going to wrap it in between the creases of the uh, the coil that you've already made here and it just sort of falls in line nicely so you want to line that up right in between there just like I did there it's a little tough to see but just like that okay and you're gonna wrap towards yourself putting pressure on there but as you can see it starts to sp split the other coil and like coil that you made it's gonna fall right in the middle just like so you put a little bit of pressure on there more pressure okay and then you're like that and we're gonna go one more time around so that we have six wraps per coil there you go guys just like that okay so what I like to do now is I have these two leads here on either side. I'm going to pull down on both of them just to make sure we got, make sure we're nice and tight. So hold your coil in your fingers like this, just pull and you're going to straighten them out a bit. You're going to apply pressure. It's going to even everything out. There you go, guys. There's a parallel coil right there. Two coils in one, six wraps a piece, total of 12 wraps. I'm gonna trim off this uh, janky end and we'll do another one. So once again, here's your single macro coil, 2.5 millimeters in diameter. And we're gonna wrap, we're gonna put it right in a little crease right there, right beside the lead. Okay, and we're gonna to wrap towards. I try to hold down on this as tight as I can. And one more time for the outside. There you go. 12 wraps, 2.5 millimeters, parallel coil. Oops, grab the wrong tool there. Pull on your leads, tighten her down. Trim off this janky end. There you go. Now you don't want these leads to cross over. See how they sort of cross here? You want them to be parallel side by side. You don't want any crossing of the leads in this particular case. Perfect. Oh. So today we're going to be installing these coils, like I said, on the Twisted Messes 2. Uh, so we'll mount this guy on our trusty ohm meter here. The ohm meter is currently off. Pull this top cap off. This is an older atomizer. I've had it for a while. I was just looking at it today and these post holes are really uneven. I'm not sure why that's even uh, the case, but uh, either way, this is out of any of my any of my atomizers next to the temple, which I'll, I'll show you guys at another date. I've used it probably the most. That's probably why there's a little bit of wear here. So just want to watch out for that, but everything's good. I took a Dremel to it today and cleaned off the post so it didn't have all that uh, carbon buildup on it. I've used the crap out of this thing. So it's it's done its time. So it's, uh, it's a great flavor chaser, great for clouds. It's just Twisted Messes, like I said before, is a great product. So um, it's got uh, these cool little air holes on the side here, all adjustable and whatnot. So good stuff. Anyways. So installing your coils onto your atomizer, same as I've ever done all the, every other time. Uh, I want to measure first before I install, just to avoid any issues later on down the road. So that's approximately where this coil is going to sit. So I'm going to take my wire snippers here and uh, trim off these leads, and then we'll do some measuring afterwards. Uh-oh, there it goes. Oh, no, I caught it. It's right here. Thank God. Uh, a local uh, a local community member here had recommended putting a tiny magnet onto my uh, snippers. It might actually come in handy. They should just make magnetized wire snippers. Then we wouldn't have issues of wire flying everywhere. Okay, so coil one. We'll remove that. Leads are now trimmed. I'm going to take coil number two here. Insert it onto my other coil jig. I have a good idea of where these leads are all going to line up. So I'm going to trim my leads to match, like so, and like so. Lead work's important, I've mentioned this before. It's great for uh, preventing all the bullshit later, so 
There you go. So I think the macro that I did on the first build video was owned out at about 0.4 on a three millimeter uh, coil jig. So um, this one's on a 2.5 millimeter coil jig. So I'm uh, I'm going to assume it's going to be a little a little lower in ohms. I'm going to guess probably about 0.18 or so. Um, that's just my guess. We'll see what happens when she's all installed and we fire her up. So I'm going to tighten these down. Nice and snug. Just like so. Twisted Messes does give you a little tool to use. Uh, I just don't have it with me right now. Too lazy to grab it. But this Coil Master kit came with this guy and it seems to uh, do the trick. So we'll center our coil a little bit. I usually pull back on it slightly, just like so. Okay. Let's install the other one. 24 gauge cancel really does hold its shape quite well, um, which is nice. I'm just going to check the other side here. We're poking through a little bit. I probably, I don't know if you can see that. So to avoid a short or any bullshit later, I'm going to trim this lead just a touch. Okay, that should help. Okay. We're pretty close to even there. Pretty close, not quite. Oh, I just noticed we had a little protrusion on the other side here. I'll snip this off. There you go. Just a little bit. We don't want any of the wires from the other side poking through. It could definitely change things up for us. Okay, so right, right about there. We'll tighten these, uh, tighten these screws down. There we go. Same thing I did the other one, try to center it a little bit, pull back. There we go guys, just like show. I'm gonna double check my work, make sure we're good. I got a little lead sticking out on the side here, so we'll trim that off. Okay, well, we'll see what she owns out to today. So my guess was 0.18, we'll see. 0.14, so pretty close. This folks would actually be a uh, something you could run on a mech. You saw how significantly lower the ohms are because we are using four coils essentially here um, so you want to make sure you have a device once again that can handle that so when you pulse it this is going to change a bit it might go up might go down but uh, either way we're we're well in the realm of being safe still for any of the devices that i'm going to use we're going to be mounting this today the mod i'm going to use is this segeli fukai 213 it's not the best mod around but uh Matter of fact, it supposedly goes up to 213 watts, but truly it only fires at about 150. Uh, but it's not a bad little mod. I enjoy it, so it fits nice in your hand anyway. So let's work the kinks out of these coils and uh, see where we're sitting at. So I charged up my battery somewhat, and uh, we'll start firing this, and we'll work out the shorts. So this guy will ramp up a little quicker. Pulse it nice and slowly. You can kind of hear it kink around you want the coils to glow from the inside out so you can see this one on the side here is firing a little quicker than the other so we're going to start the old uh, clean up our coils a bit here give them a squeeze we want them to glow evenly okay switch it around The hotter build, see, even the ohm reader said it was hot. Okay, I'm going to turn this to the off position. I'm just going to play around with these coils a bit. Just working out the kinks here. Just trying to get a nice even glow. Lots of reasons why these are firing uh, at different rates right now. I'm going to have to retighten the screws down a bit. Uh, just make sure we're 
it's a big factor. Sometimes the screws aren't tight. When you heat these wires up, the screws tend to back out on themselves a little bit. So we're off still, which is good. Safety first. Don't be playing around on your uh, your mod there or your atomizer. See how loose that one was? Really loose. Um, so that's probably the reason why that one's not firing as evenly as the other one. You go back, check your screws. You don't want to be playing around on any mods or devices with uh, with the uh, when your device is on. So I clearly I can't think and talk at the same time. So we're now down to 0.13, so we're getting a little lower here. So when I tightened them, they kind of got bent a bit, and so I'll straighten these guys up just like so. And you always check to make sure they're even. This one can come down a touch. See, they're getting a little evener. Look at that, see? Starting to get even. Ceramic tweezers, great. You can pulse no problem and squeeze on your coils to work out those hot spots and get them going even. There you go, guys. That's hot, see? It's a very warm belt. It also, the ohms also has a factor in that too, so resistance is lower, resistance is heat. There you go, so nice and even. Hot, it is a hot build. That's why I prefer to use a mod, but for safety purposes, for the sake of these videos, we're gonna use the ohm reader. So there you go. There's your parallel build, nice and tight up against the post. Fire it again for good luck. There you go. Sitting at 0.3 ohm, 0 0.13 ohms. So it's uh, nice and nice and low. Like I said, you could fire this on a mech, no problem. It's well within the safety capabilities of a 18650 or a 2700 battery or any battery for that matter. So that's a vape battery. Okay, let's turn this off and we're going to gonna wick it up same thing I always do pull apart said cotton take off the crap on the outside stretch her up this is the Scottish wicking method for those of you who haven't seen my other videos they're smaller coils, so I don't need to wrap it, twist it quite as much. There's one. You want your cotton to be even, thickness and length. So that way it wicks evenly into each coil. Water, liquids, whatever, will always find the shortest route possible. So you don't want one side of your coil drying out and the other side still wet, give you a dry hit, all that stuff. So. Okay, balance is the secret here, folks. Balance. Oh. I'm all thumbs today, folks. All thumbs. Okay, there's one nice and snug. See, you can move it around, but still nice and snug. I would say with surgical precision, but hell, if I was a surgeon, there'd be some dead people out there. Why can't I grab this guy here? See, there's always there's always opportunities here, folks. There we go, that might do it. Just can't get it in the hole. all this pressure on me there we go Jesus okay pretty even 
we get the uh, scissors. Trim these bad boys a little bit. Okay, fluff out our cotton. Trim this off here. Each side's pretty even. We'll take our tweezers, poke the poke the cotton tails underneath the coil. That's it guys, just like so. That's the dual parallel coil. So sitting at a nice 0.13. Okay, we'll pop you back up to FaceTime. We'll put her on the mod and have a vape. All right, everybody, we are back to FaceTime. So let's take this uh, bad boy off the coil master. Oh, ohm reader, it's a little stuck on there, there we go. And we'll pop her onto the uh, Segeli and we'll see how she vapes. A little lube up. You don't want to uh, don't want to fire this without any juice on there. Any catastrophic failure. I've never done that yet, but I have kissed my coils before. Let me tell you, that's a date I don't want to repeat again. So like I've done before, we're going to make sure that our watts are down a little lower than we're going to vape on. So we're sitting at 70.5 watts. I'll drop her down to 60 and we'll uh, give her a little fire and see how she goes. See, ramp up's pretty quick. Look at that, eh? just like instantly. You want to have lots of cotton in there, lots of juice. This is a hot build. It's like four coils firing all at once with a space of two, so. Just like instant ramp up. All right, let's see how she vapes. Crank her up a bit, we'll go to 80 watts. Loads of vapor, that's only at 80 watts. Um, good flavor, it's a warm vape. It's not hot, hot, but it's a warm vape. That's only at 80 watts, guys. So it's uh, it's got more oomph than the uh, than the macro coil. Not as much flavor as the twisted coil. Uh, it has a lot to do with the, uh, the surface area, but ramp up is next to nothing. So imagine if you turned the twisted into a parallel coil, and uh, the flavor, the ramp up. The two just work in harmony. So that's where the zipper is going to come into play for you guys. And next time I do a video, I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. So, um, it's, like I said, one of my favorite builds. So The Scottish wicking, don't have to drip too as often, I guess, with that. So it's, uh, it's quite nice. I'm vaping on some uh, Harambe by 12 Monkeys. It's not a bad uh, juice. I, I first tried it at CVE uh, last summer 
It was uh, one of those welcome surprises. It's like a, a grapefruit uh, mango, or not mango, grapefruit, orange, lemon, and guava, I think it is in there. So uh, it's got a bit of a throat hit, um, but it uh, definitely has lots of flavor. It's a lot better than I thought it would be for, for the flavor combinations they used to make that juice. So, um, so yeah, guys, until next time, uh, it's a pleasure as always. And I hope you uh, hope this helped you out and I'd like to see all those parallel builds out there. So uh, take care of vapors, vape on. Much love, Squad Central. Peace out. Stay safe.